Welcome to another episode of Cork in the North, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. Very quickly, before we crack on with this week's episode, I want to talk to you about our friends down at the Doyen. The Doyen pub is on the Lisburn Road. You get 25% off your food if you use the code CORK25 Wednesday to Saturday. It's a great venue to Doyen for comedy, for food, for drinks, for sport, for parking. There's great parking there. Oh, uh... And there's good toilets. And it's very clean now. And you can also hire the function rooms for weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs, your uncle's 50th, your grandfather's 35th, wherever you're from, I don't, whatever. Anyway, you can hire You can hire it. It's a great spot, uh, Diane. We're down there doing our live show on Sunday the 22nd. So please do buy tickets for the live podcast. Come down to the Diane and uh, use their facilities. Have a bit of lunch. Have a drink. Take take him out, take her out, go down there midweek, we'll have a little bit of a treat. The cost of everything's coming up, but the die in is giving you 25% off if you use the code CORK25. We're fans of them, they're fans of us. We've been talking about the die in all year, and we are delighted to be working with them because it's a great venue. I hire it out for birthdays, anything. So, details below on the die in. Please do check it out. Also, as well, I want to talk to you about the Patreon. £2 a month for three extra episodes to be released on a Monday. Sign it's up. Back. It's back. With the summer off. I was busy. Festivals, writing shores, out on tour. Right, cut my hair too short. Looks like I'm going bald. But in about two weeks, I'm going to look grey again. Now, what you got to do is sign up to the Patreon. For £2, you get three extra episodes a month delivered to you on a Monday. You also get discounts on live shows. You also get first access to my tour tickets. You also get an opportunity where you can message us and talk to us. We might do some stuff for you, help you guys out, send a few videos. We'll do whatever you want. We want people to subscribe to the podcast. If you can give us £2 a month, it helps the podcast grow and amazing guests like you've just seen. Okay, so thanks to everybody for that. Uh, We do appreciate it. Here's this week's episode. Cork in the North joining us this week. Ulster rugby player, James Hume. He's turned up with an Ulster rugby top for me. What could you get better than that? A Munster one. A Munster <laughs> one would be better. Or a Leinster one. Or even a Connacht one would be better than that one. Not, in fairness. To and also, I'm very surprised, James. Extra large. Now, are you trying to tell me something? Because I'm actually on a really good diet at the moment. Extra large. Do you know what? That That's a class though. I know you, you like a baggy fit when you're playing golf, so. Thank you. Thought, I'll wear that now when I'm playing golf. Yeah. I, did, oh. I thought I was worried I was going to bring it and you'd just be like, I'm not wearing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen... <laughs> I'm selling this now if anyone wants to buy it. <laughs> uh, just let us know. I'll put it on vintage. <laughs> no, James, I really appreciate it. No, you're very nice welcome. To see you. No worries. James Thanks Hume, me. friend of the pod, friend of me. Great to see you again. James, I'm not going to lie. Let's get down to the brass tacks. <laughs> You've had a tough run of it. Yeah. Talk to me. What's going on? How's your leg? You've been out injured now for some time. We want to see you back on the field. What's going on? Yeah. No, the got injured in April or end of April, maybe start of May. Um, Still, I had a good year last year. Had Seventeen yeah. games under the belt. I suppose we were the family fun day, the Ulster family fun day, like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And my guy says, "You, you haven't had a good couple of years, have you? You know, you've been really struggling and stuff, and not getting any games." I was like, um, "I played seventeen games yeah. last year." And you were in, you were with Ireland down in New Zealand, and you got yeah, injured yeah. there. Obviously, I was just like, I think it wasn't that bad. It was just a yeah. unfortunate, yeah. Unfortunate that, that they, happened. They, they, they said that, to, but they don't watch rugby. No, no. They you know, just, but they like, also just don't take into consideration your feelings when they say that to you. You're just oh, like, yeah. uh, I think I've been doing all right. But now it happened and it's been 17 weeks there on Monday. So it looks crazy. It looks it looks good at the minute. Um, that's the best it's looked. It looks dry. There's no swelling on it anymore. Back jumping and doing like acceleration stuff. I'll start running in another... Five or six weeks. How so. has the mental side of not training properly and being with the lads and being off the pitch affected you? Yeah, it's been tough. Um, I did maybe like 13 or 14 weeks there in a row, five days a week. And then I burnt out mentally, like really badly. Yeah. Like I just did no motivation. Luckily, me and the missus were going to Dubrovnik. I know, I saw. Very good. Looked very good. Stupid expensive. Heard. Oh my And I've also God. heard a rumour the Croatians aren't keen on the tourists. Is that yeah, true? I don't know. Maybe that's why they've bumped up the prices. Maybe they're trying pitches all off. Like, yeah, potentially, just be like, yeah, then it won't come back. And I, in personally, don't think it will be back because it was that expensive. <laughs> really, local beer. You know, when you go to like a European country, three euro, three fifty, four euro, at max. seven, six fifty, seven consistently. That's Dublin. That's, that's, that's crazy. here. That's here. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. And then like a meal, 
couple of starter dishes, main dish each, and a bottle of wine. You're talking 160 quid. 160. That's I uh, listen. It's cr- it's no, it's, food is very good. No fairness, but it's you know seven that's, days in a row eating out. You're like, oh god. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Like yeah, yeah. Um, bring back Benidorm. <laughs> bring it back. Pints there are minus two euro. <laughs> they actually pay you to go to Benidorm. I want to. We should. We. What happens is, ordinary hardworking people need to start taking over Benidorm now. Yeah. And get the get the Brits out, the ones in the push chairs and all that, the ones I that live out there. Get them out. Let's get the mid twenties back in. Let's make Benidorm the new Croatia. It'll never happen. You're not getting them out of there. Like, there's oh, no way. There's no way. There's no way. Never been to Cemented wheels. I went to Benidorm. Huh? I went to Benidorm. When? For four days. Not knowing Recently. Benidorm was Benidorm. Right. I thought I was going to Alicante. Okay. But it was in, <laughs> it's in, it's in Alicante. And I, would, and I went and went, oh, this is the Benidorm. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then it was just, it was chaos. Yeah. It was, I was probably the youngest one there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mental. You know what I mean? And it, it was like, there was Mobility Scooter Central. Yeah. Have you seen, you watched the series, Benidorm? Uh, I've seen bits of it. Like very clips good watch. Like it's very a, funny. It's a I think that's a very accurate representation of how yeah. it is. Yeah. And that's so, on top. You got injured. You went on holiday to Croatia. You got pissed off on holiday because of the cost of things. Yeah, right. Still I, enjoyed it. Still, still enjoyed it with your missus. Yeah. And uh, did you have many late nights out there? I'd say when you're out. Can I, sorry, say when you're out injured. Do you have a different disciplinary thing you have to do, or do you have to check in more with the club because you're injured? Do you can't be seen to be doing certain things, or um, how does it work? Uh, I think it's just common sense that like, you wouldn't be out. You know, I running, would. Up, running be, about and yeah, yeah fucking... or doing like stupid stuff. You know, you, you, I'm all, I would also be way too scared to do it. You'd be worried, like, like, oh yeah, like I'm, you know, because they're investing in your rehab and they yeah, want you yeah. back fit, and then you yeah. go off and do something stupid. They're going to be like, exactly. What I was saying about the golf thing, it's if I went out and on my backswing, my knee popped again or something like that. I would just. Would you say you like, have a backswing? <laughs> <laughs> the last time I played. Shut up. <laughs> right, we have to bring it up. <laughs> So we played recently at Clanley, but obviously recently last year, me, you, and... Uh, Greg and G- Angus. Greg, and Greg's gone. Greg's gone, yeah. Greg's, Greg's moved on. Yes, he uh, he is working in Dublin. He landed on his feet, though. He's, he's genius, like, good. a couple uh, of degrees, and he's playing for St. Mary's, I'm pretty sure. Oh, very good. That's good. But uh, we played Clanley Boy, and we all stood up in the first tee. I, obviously, myself, <laughs> a solid standard drive down the centre of the fair, was split it open, probably just left myself with a wedge to the green. <laughs> Um, mm. James, um, what happened? <laughs> uh, the oh. own, the manager of the Clandy Boy Golf Club came out as well to watch because there was lads in from Ulster Rugby, you know what I mean? So, uh, you got very defensive after your third try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, uh, I didn't have a lesson on my low arms yet. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, here we go. So it was just tee up and like, obviously, as you said, the manager was out and it was just a big high slice gone. I reload, bang, high slice. I could be gone. I hit one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that was gone. Luckily, I think I found, did I find the second one? Or did I just drop it? But I know Angus did the same. Yeah. But you and got into it though, Angus Curtis. He's gone as well, Angus, isn't he? Gus is... Gus is gone, yeah. He's back home at the minute in Zim. He's Zimbabwe, yeah. Zimbabwe and he's... Wow. There's only two, out, of, out of that four ball, there's only two of us left. Crazy. And one of us is injured. It's very sad. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, real sad. Uh, sad. The best thing about this was on the 18th, was it your wedge shot? No, or? no, 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 no. It was wedge shot. It wasn't me. It, it was, was Craig. It was Craig. Greg and we shot. laugh about this all the time. Right. 60 degree. I think we were. 60 degree. Probably He was probably only about 60, 70 yards. And he hit it about 110, 120. Yeah. <laughs> the 18 hole at Clandy Boy. It's a lovely par. It's a lovely par four. Hmm. And Greg was just outside. the. It was just on the fairway. And the car park is behind the green. And we're all walking on. We've had a bit of crack. It's been good fun. And Greg whacks it. <laughs> and the ball goes. Uh, he, probably about 120. He thinned the life out of it. Yeah. Out of a 60 degree. And yeah. just, I've never seen a ball travel like yeah. that. It was like skimmed. Straight into the car park. And we all kind of look. All I hear is. Bing! It hits a car. And I'm like. Oh fuck. <laughs> oh. And these are, these are my visitors. <laughs> these are the people I've gone. No they'll be fine. They'll be fine. They're totally totally fine. And then uh, I I actually remember saying to you, guys, we've got to own this. Yeah, you said it several times. I think you're freaking out of <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, we all go, we're all in this. We're all we're in all this. In this. Like, we all hit that I shot. Was, I was just like, it was great. <laughs> we're like, no, we all hit the shot. <laughs> and then what happens? 
Mr. Yeah. McCluskey. Mr. McCluskey, Wilson, came around the corner. Stuart McCluskey's dad. And he was like, oh, someone lose a ball. But was it, was it not your car? But they hit my car. <laughs> <laughs> so of all the cars in the car park, it was my car. And I'm walking up going, right, we're going to have to get the car repainted. We're going to, maybe they've knocked off a wing mirror. And Stuart McCluskey, whose dad is was there, Stuart wasn't with us. Stuart obviously plays for Ulster. He came in and goes, oh, Jesus, James, how are things? <laughs> I, whose good ball is it? I'm like, oh, we have to wreck in this. Fo-. I thought it was his car. <laughs> then we found out it was my car. And after it hit my car, everyone, well, that's fucking fine then, isn't it? Like, yeah, like, oh, you still could have damaged my car. Like, fuck, that, yeah. we only damaged Andrew's car. <laughs> we have not played since. Yeah. Well, Mitch oh, Stewart's got lifetime uh, membership yeah, there. Yeah, he was telling me. He was telling me that's... Uh, that's a result. That's a hell of a gift. Yeah, and what does he bring to the club? Nothing. No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the annual appearance, probably at a dinner. Yeah. Just um, smile and wave. When you're not playing, James, because obviously you know I'm a big, big rugby fan, when you're not playing on match days, do you still go? Do you still see the lads the night before? Do you go? You don't go to the away games? How does it, how does yeah, it work? Yeah, the, at the end of the season, we had a couple of home games, but um, as I said before, sometimes the you just get asked the same question a lot. And obviously after I did my knee... I just didn't want to get asked about my knee, so I didn't go to the last few home games of the season because I was just like, I just want to be with by myself and not have to deal with people. Did asking. you go out though with the lads for a pint after? Like, no, I didn't drink for three months when because, I got my surgery. Really? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, so I, I was. You I, just you basically just withdrew. I was just yeah. I went to the, had a couple of end of year socials and I just went and had a couple of zeros and then went home just because. Couple of zeros, man. Couple of zeros, just a few zeros. Yeah. Yeah, just there should be a try to get a buzz. <laughs> try, try to get a buzz off me zeros. <laughs> get, can you get me a girlfriend and pick me up there? I've had four zeros. <laughs> feeling something. Feeling, feeling something. something. Dark enough. I feel like I play for Monster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I, um, I played a bar a couple of months ago there, and it was when I wasn't drinking, Andrew. And like I had, you know, if if I go out now, you know, it was Sean, Sean just had a baby. Oh, nice! Congrats! Yeah. Congratulations! Uh, thank you. And like, Doesn't love it. Uh, for a while, I wasn't drinking at all there. Mm-hmm. And when I was going out and playing gigs, especially, you know, wasn't drinking, I would have like one zero. No, if I was going out somewhere. Yeah. But we were playing a bar where like the place kept feeding us paints, you mm-hmm. know, on the other, yeah. ba- the other ball mates, you know, we're like getting whatever paints. But I was just going, oh, no, just zero for me. When I would have usually only taken the one. Um, but I had like four just because the cap gave me it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, they start getting sick and stuff oh, like that. Oh, it's horrible. And but I felt bad because <laughs> the cap just sat in it down the table. Yeah. Um, but I was driving home and I was going like, shit, you know, like, what? What if there's like a small percentage in this? You know, I like put a four small top. <laughs> yeah, there, there is like, a little bit in them. Yeah, but for, yeah. It would, I think you'd have to have a like for an absolute. Yeah, there should be uh, you know all these point. people that go around like you now drinking the zeros there should be a non-alcoholics anonymous meeting you know for people who just, <laughs> boast, who just boast about hey guys I don't drink anymore fuck off okay I don't care I don't care you're brilliant you're better than us you've recovered from your childhood trauma well done daddy loves you and your mom hates you I'm sick of it mate but I, I, I got stopped by the, there was a police checkpoint mm-hmm. you know, on, on the way home as there is in the West. Yeah, and I, I was, um, I shit myself because I was going, shit, I have four of these zeros, man. Like, I'm oh, man. <laughs> this gets it out. Yeah, I say, yeah. I'd done the breathalyzer and, um, and I was like fucking panicking. And the guy goes, are you nervous here? And I was going like, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. But I was fucking shaking. And he came back. I was like, no, there you go, 0.0. And he's like, what are you nervous for? And I was just going, he's like, do you drink? And he's like, no, I haven't drunk in like four months. And he's like, what the fuck? You should have turned around to him and go, zero points there. Good, because I just had four points. Yeah. <laughs> Something wrong with that machine. See you later. That's, that's such a power move by the police officer saying, are you nervous, mate? Just <laughs> no. whips no. out his bats on it. You know what I mean? Whatever you're into, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how, like, obviously, uh, last season, change, change manager with Ulster. I know we're having the crack and having a laugh. Big changes at the club. <laughs> How have you guys settled in with the new players that have come in? And obviously there's been a few players leave and stuff like that. Like, how, What's the vibe like this year with the season coming ahead? Do you think you're going to make a bit more progress? Yeah, yeah, I'm hopeful. Um, obviously, I'm, I'll be out until after New Year and stuff. So it's hard I still have another while to just do my own stuff and get my own shit in order. But Richie's really good guy. Very, very good coach, and Jimmy Duffy's just come in as well. He's doing the mm. the line out stuff and breakdown. 
uh, and then the two players, Aiden and Werner, have come in. Very good, just settled There's in. There's a lot of people being good. promoted up as well, young lads coming in. Yeah, well. yeah, just yeah. giving a bit more responsibility and yeah. yeah, they're not looked at as young lads anymore. Not young lads, yeah. Yeah, Squat. they kind of have, yeah, but that's what I mean. The, previously, you'd be like, oh yeah, they're the young lads. Like Harry Sheridan, for instance, he's like 23 now. I would have been like, he's a young lad, but now a couple of people have went and stuff. You can just see like his responsibility kind of moves up a wee bit. So mm. that's just an example. Would you be classed as a senior player now? Yeah. That's terrifying. mad. That's that's that terrifying. It's like I actually thought that. Like when I when I see some players leaving, I was going. I was thinking myself, James is probably a senior player. Yeah. But you probably are thinking, I've only, I've only been in there a few years. You know, I know you've been yeah, there for a while, yeah. but like in your head. Well, I'm only I turned 26 on Saturday, so. And you're class of senior. So I'm like, that's unbelievable, senior. man. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That is that is. It's it's strange because like they'd be like, oh, you're a senior player. And I'm like, oh, I'm only 25 though. Yeah. But you if know. you think about it, like. You still have great opportunity and great time to get back into the Ireland setup as well. Because obviously, oh, yeah, I know even, you've been in the Irish setup yeah. a good few times, but. Obviously, when you're realistic goals to start with, you like, you'd. I just want to get back comfortable playing because at the thought of. At the, at the minute, psychologically, the thought of playing a game of rugby freaks me out because of how innocuous the injury happened. Like, it just popped. So I'd say I'd be doing a lot of. They say a lot. They say something like that happened to Moss O'Leary when he was scrum half. He went over on his ankle, do you remember? And he was never the same again. I think yeah. the fear of it happening again <clears> will <throat> sometimes stop you from being committing 100%. Yeah. Because they say, is this right in rugby where they say, if you're not 100% committed to the tackle, you can actually get more injured? Oh, yeah. You could kind of, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you have to be 100% committed. Yeah. Um, I predict something for you, James. I was thinking about this. I actually think you're going to make the next World Cup squad. And I'm calling it. I'm calling it oh, here now. That would be... That would you be are going to go in 2027 to the World Cup. That's, I think if you get back dope. fit in 2025 yeah. and you have two... You get back to 25, you're in the Six Nations. You might get into the Autumn Series 25. Six Nations 26. Yeah. Autumn Series 26. No, it would Six be... Nations, I think it would be great. If, you'll be 28, you know. 29. Perfect age. Yeah. I think like that would be awesome. That's something I look forward to. Yeah. If uh, you know, I got back in February and everything went smoothly and there was no hiccups yeah, exactly, and no yeah. fear, and I started to get a bit of mojo back, then I'd be like, right, that's my next goal is to. Do, I actually to think you can do it. I think so I, pre I, pre I, I think appreciate the because the I will be asking for tickets. <laughs> 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 let's get to the bottom of it. <laughs> let's get to the let's get to the brass tacks. <laughs> yeah. Night before our Ireland quarter final in rugby, James Hume has started. I'm texting for mate. Where the fuck am I going to pick up these tickets? I don't give a fuck how you're doing tomorrow, mate. We're playing New Zealand. I don't give a shit, mate. Get me tickets. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's bad because I had yeah, tickets. Yeah. I was going to the World Cup final. Uh, you know, I was going to the yeah, World Cup yeah. final last year. I don't want to bang on about it, but I've I've had a go at McCluskey about it <laughs> uh, for not winning. But anyway, that's by the by. That's that, that's bad by. Um, you've had a good summer. You've been out for a good few things. I've seen you out and about uh, a few times and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How are you um, uh, dealing with like? Uh, the pressure of constantly living as a sports person is it very normal like i'll give you that i'm on a diet right <laughs> and my diet to me is probably normal for you yeah you, you know yeah. what i mean like like what i eat what you eat to me is like that, that's just normal for you but to yeah. me that would be hard no, I, I you're a sports yeah, person. I know what you mean. It's just, but it's your almost discipline like, is fucking. You must have mad discipline. But you, but that's not even something that we well that I, I don't know about other people. Other people do things differently. You know, don't put weight on as easily and stuff like that. But I, that would just be second nature to me now. Like I would just kind of, I wouldn't if I did a day of binge eating. I would feel bad for a couple of days and then be like emotionally like, or physically both. Both probably yeah. I'd be like oh god yesterday I like I got up and. Had a pack of crisps. And then, you know, had a Chinese. She probably... Is yeah. Chinese binge eating for you? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. But I would have Sean. one. I'd have one every weekend. Like, so I'd have one every weekend. Would you? hundred percent. Yeah, but you're burning calories like that, man. You're, well, you're it's, exercising yeah. five days, six days a week. So, I would just go so what I'm nothing. eating. Yeah, I would go what, what I need to eat that day or what type of food I'm eating just based off how many calories I've burnt. Like, we'll say there. That's it. Like, that's such... Like, I don't think people give people who stay fit the respect that they deserve. Yeah. Staying fit is a full-time job. Yeah. Staying fit, healthy food, cooking, planning, food prep, training, motivation, dealing with injury set. People always go, oh, I'm going to the gym to lose weight. Oh, well done on losing weight. Let's start celebrating the people who are actually <laughs> pretty yeah. decent. Sometimes it gets a bit unhealthy, like as an obsession. You know, like they went, 
went through a period there where I thought that, you know, if you wanted to lose a bit of body fat and stuff, you would just cut loads of calories down, just load of protein. And then I'd be eating probably like 1,500, 2,000 less than what I should be eating a day. And nothing was actually happening because there was nothing there to burn off. Do you wow. know what I mean? So like I'd be under fueling to try and get into better shape, but that's not the way to do but it. But you've just, you're a lot of muscle, like. That, well, yeah, I put on a bit of weight for my surgery, like. Yeah, but you will, <laughs> as soon as you get back running. Yeah, yeah, back running. You know what I mean? Like that'll exactly. just fall back off. Yeah. Like. So when you, when, you, when you go back training now, do you going back to starting at 0%, are you? Like in terms of your fitness and stuff, your match fitness, how much do you think well, you're no, going like, to retain? Been, no, um, but you have so, so long running before you, I think you have maybe like three and a half, four months right. of running. So you build Before, it up. Yeah, you're building it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm also doing like walk bikes and stuff at the minute. So your bike sessions kind of take you over a sauna yeah. and stuff as well. Your partner, Tanit, must be sick of you being injured, like sitting at home. When you when you were <laughs> she, first injured. She's been through. When you were, fir when you were, when you were first injured, you know, like that yeah, first yeah, yeah. initial few weeks when you oh, I was sitting down. It was a nightmare. I, I, yeah. She's been with me through but brilliant, like, every surgery. That's brilliant. Six surgeries. That's, a, that's unbelievable it's unbelievable commitment pretty, from your partner, it's isn't it? Pretty cool. Like, and the yeah. fact that you didn't even pay to take her to Croatia. Unbelievable. <laughs> She's been with you for six surgeries and it's seven euro a drink and you told her she wasn't allowed to have it. You're a disgrace, James. You're a disgrace. <laughs> no, but like I remember seeing Tana out in the pub and I went, Hi Tana, and she goes, The knee, the knee, his knee, it's on the remend, it's on the mend. And I went, It's on the mend. We were all going, It's on the yeah. mend. <laughs> she's, uh, yeah, just, you know, she she's was, brilliant. She like. was so good after that knee surgery, to be fair to her. Like, well, she was so good at oh, three all of them because, yeah. you know, when I did my foot and ankle and all kind of stuff, she just had to cook for me. And But that, that, this, that, that, that this takes a toll crazy. like on your partner as well, emotionally, because you're out of sync, you're anxious, you're stressed, you're worried. She's like, oh, this isn't the James I'm kind of I know because yeah. we're in a crisis point in terms of injury. And yeah, we don't know what's going to. It's going to be quite a while. He's out like nine months or potentially longer, shorter, depending on rehab. We don't know. We don't have clarity. Yeah, yeah. It's quite anxious, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, she's so she's she's the best. Like she's so supportive. So like even like I sent her a video of me jumping today. It was like my first time I was jumping. Small thing, but she replies like. Hype me up and being like so proud of myself so much. That's great, man. Yeah. Imagine sending yeah. a video to your girlfriend at 26 doing a jump. <laughs> and she's going, I'm so proud. <laughs> it's like it's like you were born with challenging circumstances. <laughs> I jumped were today. You, I'm were 26. You, were you put it like that? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Crazy. I'm 26. I jumped today. <laughs> Sending a message. Girl, I went for a walk in a straight line. Oh my God, my God, <laughs> yeah, James. Yeah, that's, you're 26. That's my boy. That's, that's my, my boy. boy. <laughs> And yeah, then, when you put it like that, it's and crazy. then in about six months, you are more of a man than I ever will be. You'll be in crunching tackles. <laughs> I remember seeing you guys in the airport. You were flying out to France. We were playing Claremont in yes. was it the quarter final yes. of the so URC? You didn't have a great. It, it didn't. Yeah, I thought you had a decent enough first half. The squad. I'm talking mm. about the games, but it kind of got away from you. Yeah, no, it was just. A, it was just. It, that, that, you seemed that, out of yeah. sorts. The whole squad. Seemed that out period of sorts. was that was tough when mm. the handover kind of happened, and then. Richie was away for a bit and then it was, yeah. he came in and we went straight into two South Africa games. Exactly. And yeah. two Europe was, games. But when stuff. I when I saw you in the airport, I was chatting to a few of you, I chatted to Ian, Ian Henderson and Stuart and yourself and I was like, oh, you know, you were off. And I think it was an early kickoff the following day. I think it was 12 o'clock or one o'clock. 12 French at home, home, one there. One, one yeah. o'clock. And I watched it. I yeah. watched it in the hotel. I was staying in Chiswick and I got up, went to the gym had your game ready. I think it was ITV4 it was on. Or no, it was, anyway, so it was one of those channels anyway. It was on anyway. And I was watching it and I was going, I was watching it and uh, first half, I thought, you guys were doing quite well. And next thing I was like, I was with them in the airport yesterday. It was really strange. And then I was like, and then after about half an hour, I was like, for fuck's sake. I was like, you're fucking. I actually felt like texting them. Yeah, I was going to say. my text. I was going to say. That what's was, going to have an yeah, impact yeah, yeah, yeah. in the game. <laughs> <laughs> It's just I, so I, impulsive. It's so weird <laughs> yeah, to yeah. be like, I've got James's number, I've got Stuart McCluskey's number, and I'm watching them on telly in a European rugby match, and Stuart is out of position. Can you get my phone? <laughs> Stuart, type, you need to type back. Like, as if he yeah, was, yeah. the fact that yeah. I thought that Switch he was going to read my Switch text on, half time ago. Can you imagine him being in the dress? Can imagine him being in the dressing room at half time, quarter final of the URC, and Stuart goes, That's Andrew Ryan's just text. <laughs> Can we just keep it tight on the yeah, back? He's like, I didn't think of that. <laughs> That's class. He's like, Andrew, thank you, bro. Thank you. You're going to have I mean? a hell of a half. <laughs> you know Richie Murphy's gone, who is this master tactician? 
I want to speak to him after the yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the fact that I reached to the phone to think that I should text him. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's crazy. how mad it is. Yeah, yeah. Wait, do you watch your games back? Yeah, yeah. Do you watch the full game back? Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you, cause I, I saw Rob Herring in uh calf, cafe or calf one day and he was obviously watching stuff on his iPad that the coaches had sent him. Yeah. I think you were you were playing a well a Cardiff team and he was they were showing anyway. But when you come home, do you actually sit down, watch it and stop and analyze it? Or because I don't yeah. watch my comedy back. I'll I'll watch a bit, cut a clip and put it up, but I won't watch the full yeah. bit. Like, no. do you know what I mean? How are you watching yourself? So we we get at the start of the week we'd get a full package uh attack and defense package on right. on them so we would watch their game like in clips to see what they're like what their patterns are and stuff and then i would watch my i'd watch the game back and then there's five different angles you can watch it from so you if you get to a moment of the game you want to kind of watch you'd like watch it rewind slow-mo it, and then maybe switch to a different angle and see if right. there's something else okay. you're saying so like sometimes it can take you a while going through it and especially if you're making notes and stuff but there's there's periods you go through when you've played like especially last season, I played seventeen games. It was the same type of stuff that I was needing to work on. So I I I would just watch it back, whole way through and kind of skip through as opposed to at the start of the season when you haven't played in a while and you're really trying to like break down good habits and all that kind of that, that type of stuff when you haven't played a game in a while. But when you've played you know seventeen in a row, you kind of just go week to week and your head's fried. Yeah, you know, so. it's bad. You just do what you need to do when you're in a kind of a flow state and you just, you know. I'd love to come in and give you the team talk. That'd be good. I'd just walk in and be like, you, <laughs> be out, yeah. out, contract terminated, yeah. house sold. Watch your name, don't care, get <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, oh, what's the guy on the, oh, on the wing with the scrum cap? Mikey. Mikey. I go, uh, why are you wearing a scrum cap on a wing, mate? You're not involved in much. <laughs> you know, I just like riff. I just like start ripping yeah, but, into them. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? He, you know? he, he's going to hit that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that, this is something you struggle with as a comedian as well. That some people take things badly. Yeah. But I know, I like. I would watch a lot of comedy, a lot of American stuff. Like, yeah. you know, um, big names over there. So I kind of understand I think that Stockdale but, didn't take too kindly to me mentioning he was out for three hundred sixty-four days, and then suddenly got back in the Irish squad after one day <laughs> when he was back fit. The type of thing that yeah. it was just a joke. Yeah, yes, I know. He's I clearly a phenomenal player. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And I know that he was. He was. I know how good he is. Like, and he's phenomenal. But it was. I was just like, well, what are you? What are you doing with Andy Farrell? Oh, I have to get back in. You know, I was <laughs> yeah, just kind yeah, of yeah. joking. You know, yeah. That's what people. Some people, I just think they're, they're like, who's this guy? I think he is. But it's literally the purpose of comedy. It's just, just having a crack. I'm yes. jealous. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. It's the fact that like I know every one of them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. oh, God, there's, you know, there's, yeah, you know, there's, oh, there's Stockdale having a coffee. I said like, my you mom know? called me. I was on the phone with my mom like two weeks ago, and she was, she was like, "And what are you, what are you up to today?" Oh, there's Rob Herring just drove past me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, right, okay. <laughs> don't need to I saw Rob Herring in the barbers, and I walked in. He doesn't know me, but yeah. I went up and I went, "Hi, yeah, Rob," <laughs> and he went, "Hi," right. and I went. <laughs> Getting your hair cut, <laughs> like like the most pointless conversation. Just bin juice conversation. I felt like looking at him going, mate, that missed tackle last week, right? <laughs> what you should have done. <laughs> Imagine that's the yeah, worst thing. Your phone it's the <laughs> worst thing you can say to anyone. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I like, uh, I know, like, I think, like, uh, I always thought rugby players were the ones you can have to crack with. I've dealt with soccer players. I'm sorry, but I there, don't think. I think rugby players, for me, are the ones that they're the best crack because they it's a tough sport. There's a lot of respect in the game. Um, you know, soccer players think very, very protected and very, I think, more so detached. Oh, yeah, yeah, From yeah. reality. Yeah, yeah. And I think rugby players, you know, you come from a small club there's not really much money in terms of transfer fees and all these type of things. I know people move and they sign, they get contracts and all that, but ultimately, you know, it's still very community based. Yeah, yeah. A bit like GA and stuff like that. But there's just something about footballers. Like, I'll give you an example. I've stayed in a hotel in West London and that's the hotel that the Premier League use or Premier League teams use when they play Brentford. Yeah. And so I've stayed and there's been teams there and they corner off the back of the hotel to put curtains up, private area. But you see the bus, you see the team bus down the side of the hotel. Yeah, yeah. And that's the hotel, right? I've gone in, Aston Villa have been there. 
It's all locked off. I've seen a couple of Aston Villa players. They have a whole separate private area completely. We I can't go anywhere near. There's security, security. There's like four or five security people. Everything is very strict. Yeah. <clears throat> I was staying there recently and there was another team staying. And we came in from doing the comedy store in the evening and uh, got in. And then uh, two ladies arrived to, at late in the evening. like, And they went up to the staff and just went, uh, we're here for the room number, <laughs> which was the room where the team stays. Right. Because that's that side of the hotel. Yeah. So the night before a Premier League game, there was women being what, brought into the rooms. What were they? Oh, and... into the players' rooms. <laughs> that's that's kind of crazy. <laughs> and I thought, fair play. You know, like, I mean, I don't know what to say here. You like, should have went up and just been like, I think you're Excuse me, me. <laughs> uh, they're very busy tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and he, <laughs> now, it could have been, there was two of them. I saw one and I saw another one, but they, it was, I feel it was done in a tactical way to get them in. Right. But the staff knew. Staff um, were like, oh yeah, come on us. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't staying in the hotel. They weren't like massage therapists. No, they were very, very attractive women. Okay. Like, and I'm talking proper wag. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking. They weren't girlfriends of them. No, no. I'd say they could have been. Or people that were texting, you know, like. like yeah, yeah. But you got these footballers are only like 21, 22, like. Yeah. I'm not saying the team. Just getting after it. It was, a, it was quite a while ago now, so it was. It was yeah, yeah. I stay in that hotel all the time, so there's lots of different teams, but I'm just saying that team lost the following day. <laughs> but like, but when I've stayed in hotels, with rub, and rugby teams have been there, mm -hmm. no problem. They've all mixed. Yeah, like that, that whole. I find rugby you know, people more engaging. Yeah, I think it's, I don't know, I don't think a lot of people take themselves too seriously in yeah. rugby. I think that's maybe why. Have you, would you have dealt with other rugby players aside from most of the ones? That yeah, also? I would have dealt with, uh, I would have, I know quite a lot of guys from Munster. The Munster ones. Oh, like I would, a lot of my friends played yeah. rugby and stuff. I just find that there, there's more crack yeah. with the rugby lads. I get more, the, the rugby lads seem to have massive highs and massive lows. So for example, the rugby lads can go and train really well and then they can have a big blowout. And their blowout like it would be, you know, a weekend on a piss, lads trip away, proper Saturday night, pizza, pints, right? <laughs> soccer lads. No, but you know what I mean? No, no. But soccer <laughs> lads. You know, pizza. Lads, yeah. Wah, 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 <laughs> fucking way. Right? But the soccer lads, it's like, it's just, I don't know, it's no, a I, I, thing. I, that point you made is, is very good that they're detached and, you know, they they couldn't go on. A social for the weekend and just have a whole squad piss up because like in in like public because there'd just be eyes on them people yeah, exactly. videoing and stuff they, yeah they can't relax they can't enjoy themselves so therefore they probably take themselves a bit too seriously and don't know really know you know and it's a shame yeah you know what i mean like it is it is a bit of a it is have you come across a lot of soccer players in your time would you I, ever I mix... just know a couple of irish league ones like uh the you know a couple i went to school with and stuff but they're obviously completely fine because it's not irish league it's not you know, Premier League football detached. Yeah. I'm, only ta I'm talking about like, I'm not talking about fellas here. I'm talking about, you know, Premier League, Champions League type. I've yeah, come across it. a few of those kind of footballers. Their lives are just so yeah. different. I'd say it's absolutely crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, you have like lads who are, you know, 17, 18 on, you know, 20, 30 grand a week. And you're just like, that is just, that's crazy. Like that is. That's nuts. You know, you, 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 you who do you trust then? <laughs> if you think about it like, you're an 18 year old kid and you're on 20, 30 grand a week playing for an Arsenal or Man City or something like that. Who do you trust yeah. in life? Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? Just you know people what I mean? clinging to you. What about, that. what about uh, you, your, your squad of lads and your kind of, I don't want to delve into it, like or go into this too deep, but like obviously being a professional rugby player has its rewards. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you, are you guys allowed to do a lot of stuff outside of rugby that can get you some sponsorship, can get you some social? I mean, I don't know if you, you know, but I'm just saying, like, can you go back to Ulster and say, listen, I'm signing a deal here with Spar. I'm signing a deal here with Puma. Yeah. I'm signing a deal here with Lucas Aid. Uh, I, you know, are you allowed you, you, to do you all can't this? Do that. You're just not allowed to wear Ulster kit when you do it. All right. It, that has, that's a personal branding thing. So you can't turn up on your Ulster kit in Spar and I. No, or if I, that's Three right. for two on butter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm James Hume, three for two on the butter. <laughs> I love butter. <laughs> There's nothing better than coming home when Mammy makes me a good spuds with the butter. And I love the butter from the spar. <laughs> Follow me below for more information. You've practiced that. Like, you, you want a butter. I'm actually function. currently doing a spar and I <laughs> yeah. campaign at the moment. There we go. Then. No, the, that's why I'm not wearing Ulster kit now because I came from training there. So I made sure to bring spare clothes. 
Because you can't do this in Ulster kit. If I was sitting in Ulster kit now, I know. Because it's not through Ulster. It's through me. It's you, wow. and, me. It's you and me. Oh, what? Oh, right. If you got in con- contact with Ulster and said, can I want him to do a podcast and they came to me then, then I would be fine where Kent, but this is between. It's sort of like the equivalent of people putting all views are my own, you know, on their. Yeah. All views are my own. Because yeah. like. But who else were they going to be? Like? <laughs> You're self-employed. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> you know? <that's> <laughs> um, uh, do you worry about life after rugby? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because so sport, when, you know. When I got injured, um, mum and my dad and Tanith and stuff were all like, this has been to be a good period to, you know, suss out what you want to do and stuff after will. rugby. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I, unique horses and stuff, none of that would appeal to me. Right. Like, at all. Um, an office job would appeal to me. So I started coaching Grosvenor. All right. Club. A couple of mates who used to go to Lloyd's with and go to the sauna and stuff met met through like a couple of years ago. They played for them and they just said jokingly, like, do you want to come down and coach us? Like they were they were struggling a wee bit. Seniors? Yeah, or... like a, yeah, they're in junior one. So there's like one A, one B. How old are we talking these guys? Oh, these are, they're full men. Like. So you could be giving a 32-year-old advice? Yes. Brilliant. Correct. Love that. <laughs> yeah. And they go, what do you know? Mate, Caps running. <laughs> <laughs> So I started coaching them and then I was like, I like it. I got good feedback from them that that I'm good at it. And I'm like, that could be it. I that, think it is. You think, you think coaching was the... Because I, I know Chris coaching. Henry tried it for a bit. It just what didn't suit him. But yeah. it, I think you have to be a personality for that. Yeah. You know, you know, you have to have a certain personality. What is it about it that you enjoyed the most? I just like that it's not, it's not boring, everything. It's just like a moving base. There's so many different challenges to come to you every session and every game that you maybe perceive differently than them and then you would you know i just they're quite good at coming to me and being like what do you think and then we'd chat about it and then try to alter things and they wouldn't end up working sometimes and you're like that feels really good and then they like they enjoy it they're enjoying training they're enjoying games so like maybe that's that's a career after rugby wow i could see yeah. that imagine james yeah. you, you also also first team coach you know what I mean? I'd, I'd still be texting you going, any tickets? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I look at a, something like Ron Nagara, right? Obviously, obviously, class number 10. Goes off to New Zealand, does a couple of years in New Zealand. Yeah. Then moves to France. Does really well with La Rochelle. Wins, you know, the European Cup, blah, 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 a couple of times. Um, And I sit there and I kind of go, okay, so what I love about him, he's got the hell out of Ireland. He's gone to the other side of the world, learned his trade, new players, new surroundings. No one really knows who he is. Goes to France, built up a squad. Yeah. Is that something that you would think to yourself? If I'm going to coach, I need to get get out of here. I'm going to because um, like if you walk back in, you can't really retire from Ulster and go. Oh, any chance of a coach the under 19s? Next thing you know, you're still around the same. Yeah, people. yeah. No, no. You like mean. like would you think to yourself? I'm going to go to first division in France for a year just to be assistant coach and learn. And I think I mean? it also depends on what route you want to go. If you want to go like, you know, straight into professional coaching, fresh out of rugby, which would be tough. Because why is it tough? Because coaching is incredibly tough at professional level. The amount of video you have to watch um, all the time, like you're watching tons of stuff to come up with plays for your team to run against them, and how they attack, so how you're going to defend, all that kind of stuff. Like you watch. So, so I'm, when I'm so when I'm watching Ireland, I'm thinking Mike Cat, Easterby, all these guys in the background, all they're doing is watching videos, flat out, and then they'll have meetings to talk about you know what they want to do and how. To, what drills they want to run and yeah. coaching cues. It's just like, it's, it seems constant. In terms of the players and stuff, would you have to like be coming at that with like a bank of stuff? So like over the years, you'll have built up, you know, like a book of plays. No, mm-hmm. they like you'd have your, basically your foundation plays, which like your two, three that you'd always have. And then yeah. you'd have like maybe three that'll, that have changed because of the opposition you're going to face. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. you know, they might have a week 10 that you can, you know, you can manipulate them to run at him and then take the edge next. Or you may have a week 13, you're like, right, let's go down his channel. Let's play 312 and try to go down his, send a couple of big lads running so he bites and then you're taking it, you know what I mean? But, but Several the stuff. the experience of being able to spot that yes. in the analysis. And that's, I mean, you watch so much video because you want to see a trend and how they defend yeah. and stuff like that. So it's, 
yeah. And then obviously you'll come up with plays through that. And obviously our that's what soaps is good at. Mm. It's a lot of shit hosiery in the in rugby. Yeah. What what kind of stuff has been happening in games? Obviously, when you were back playing and stuff like that. Obviously, you played seventeen times last season. Like, do you do you do you look for it? Do you go for it? Do you see when someone's doing a bit of it and you're going, right, I'm going to get this fucker back? Like, how does it... Because when I see... Like, I saw McCluskey there against South Africa and he was holding your man back and pushing him back. And I was yeah. going, go on, Stuart. I was about to text him again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, Stuart, leave him alone. He's very vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, but, like, my point is that, like, when you go on and you, you hit the first tackles and stuff, do you realize, oh, these fuckers are... They're leaving their foot in. They're, you know, they're... Yeah. Like, is there a lot of shit going it on? It just depends on who you're playing. Like, usually if it's a team that maybe all serve a bit of history with. Or you know Munster, that, Connacht, Leinster, Connacht. I think Connacht and us. Or I remember the quarter final and not season past ever the season before. Like five minutes into the game, it was fifteen on fifteen pushing, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So I think they came. I think they always come up to us with a bit of let's bring it to them and try to wind them up and but stuff. But when you're holding a guy by his chest, it's easy. You're a fucking prick. Is it just prick, yeah. dickhead? asshole like yeah. is it just like what, what's the kind of stuff you're saying to each other yeah, it's like you're learning you're getting how... a kebab after because yeah. I might go for a Chinese like what are you it's what... like you're learning how to swear like, for what the first you, time like, yeah like what are you saying what are you saying to them like uh, them but but afterward like what do you because I've seen you see that I'm telling you going you're a fucking dick oh, you but say, then well, after the game you're like oh well played man you know yeah, I mean? yeah but I mean yeah the be bit of a smack comes out of me when I do it like do you yeah yeah the fuck you think you're doing man no, I, I'd say you're I'd say you're a bit you fucking you're not afraid like I've seen no, you play. You're, I'm not not you're not afraid. Joe, like. I'm not afraid because I know I'm not going to get smacked. And if they do smack me, they get a red card. So, uh, do you know what I mean? Is it? Is, 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 is it do people, yeah. Are people doing it to see who's going to break first? So I think you just do it to kind of off. wind people up. Um, it only kind of happens maybe once a game, maximum for the most part. On average, like you know, I wouldn't. You wouldn't be. You'd have to be a special type of prick to be running about and doing it to every single player. You know, maybe if you have like a personal battle with a player. And you keep hitting each other. You know that type of stuff? Yeah. There was one South Africa, I think they're 12 venter for Bulls. And he was uh, I was about to carry and the ball slowed down. He was looking at me, he was like, carry the fucking ball then, carry the fucking ball. And then he, like, we, we bounced off each other pretty much. And he was like, ah, after he hit me. And I was like, whoa, right, okay. No, so he's like... Yeah, like that's the type of thing. You'd be amped up, you know, but then on the ground when the ball goes you start grabbing each other a wee bit just, it just depends it depends how you depends on the tension of the game depends on not, what's yeah. happening um, I did a lot like, <laughs> yeah I, lot. I did a lot yeah. do you know there's, there's, there's crazy things about uh, do you know the Leinster fans get ripped you know like Leinster fans Leinster rugby fans oh hey guys you guys going down to see Leinster at weekend oh my god you're going to go see Rugger and O'Driscoll and the boys yo 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 what was the do you ever what, like yeah you, what did they say the Heinemite number they call it was it like, what's it called Heineken but they're like that's absolute Heinemite it's Heinemite guys <laughs> yo yo <laughs> Heinemite yeah, yeah. Have you Heinemite that? no there's, a, there's an author Ross Ross Carlo Kelly oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah he, he started all that about the senior <laughs> cup and uh, yeah, the D4 guys Belvedere yeah. playing like you know, yeah, Corinthians. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah, did you go? You go in Six Nations? Yeah, 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 yeah. Might go, might go for a pint in Black Rock after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really think you know, Bundyaki very poor in defence today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're sitting there going, what the yeah, fuck do you know, mate? Crazy. I know nothing. Yeah, I love watching it. I know a bit about the game, but I'm no expert. Yeah. I can't tell a player how to feel. Yeah, when they're Apart playing from rugby. Stuart, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuart tackle yeah. harder. Go <laughs> above the shoulder. That's bullshit, Stuart. <laughs> Can you imagine getting a text off me after an international yeah. going, mate, what was that? That's gone, but you'd be like, you'd be like, block, block. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just send you a picture of me in your house with your girlfriend going, hiya. <laughs> I'm not injured. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looking about me around for dinner. <laughs> yeah, I take you to Croatia for free. <laughs> oh, that's mad, man. Um, you, um... So you're hoping you're back February, March. For the February, tail end yeah. of the season. Come right. in, collect the medals, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, hopefully around February. I think ACLs used to be six and a half, seven months. You'd be back. And then my physio was sending me this research now that if you come back before nine months, you have a high likelihood of re-rupturing it. So it's nine months is the minimum now. Right. Well, I hope you come back, man. I hope you come back. Yeah. You come back fit. So get I. a good run out. So do I. I know, but get a, <laughs> yeah, get no, a good no, run no. out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get yourself back fit and then get one, if you can get one really good season under your belt, you know? Yeah, man. Get that 25 season under your belt. 25, 26 season under your belt. You know what I mean? Hopefully get yourself back into the Irish squad and in and around those because uh, 
you've a lot to bring to the game, James. I've watched you a lot of times, yeah. and you know what you're doing. You and Stuart are very good there on the back line, as well as a lot of the other Ulster, Ulster rugby players. Um, so hopefully you can uh, get yourself back into uh, Ulster team, Ulster yeah. Irish contention, and that's somebody else I know that I can get tickets off. <laughs> and that's what's all that's important to me. It's contacts. the foundation it's of the all foundation these contacts. Of James Hume, follow him online. James, what's your socials? Uh, that's a great question. Under- at injured. <laughs> at Instagram. At injured rugby player. Oh <laughs> at James Hume. Uh, at underscore we'll, J-U-M-3. At we'll put it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Uh, James like Goodman. Don't worry about that. Good friend of the podcast. Good for his coming. He's a good laugh. And uh, hopefully he gets back fit. Gets back on the pitch as soon as possible. Thanks everyone for joining us in Cork and the North this week. Um, please do sign up to the Patreon. All the details below. Don't forget to die in pub. All details below. Etc, etc. You know everything is below. All these... Loyal listeners, we do appreciate you. Thank you very much. Talk soon.